Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so I wanted to put together a compilation. I, it's important to me that I continue to show the ways that Megan has come for Catherine. And so I've done lots of videos of it in the past, but I wanted to do kind of a mega compilation. You guys seem to like when I do those and I put together like the best of, or in this case, the worst of. Um, videos I've done showing where Megan has, again, come for Catherine. And it's not Megan versus Catherine because there is no versus. There's no comparison, obviously. But also, Catherine doesn't seem to stoop to Megan's level. And she doesn't fire back and she doesn't, you know, come back for her and all that stuff. So I, I just think it's important to keep calling out Megan's awful behavior toward Catherine. So I've put some of the lowlights together in this and the ways that she has come for Catherine. So I thought we could take a look and discuss it. Um, and I, I do hope you enjoy this compilation of it. Now in this one, it ranges. I, I have, you know, parts from where you name it, like she's stolen stories from Catherine that we've heard Catherine say in the past to, um, the way that Megan handles the paparazzi, I'm laughing because Megan calls the paparazzi versus Catherine, you know, had a long, painful history when William and um, when William and Catherine were, you know, dating and courting and all that stuff. So I just kind of wanted to put together a big compilation of that. So I hope you enjoy this. It's kind of heartbreaking to see some of the ways she's come for Catherine. But again, what to me makes it better is knowing how Catherine has continued to shine and I mean, just do her, do her best and do a wonderful job. And everybody has, I, I just feel like Catherine's popularity has continued to grow and everybody has surrounded her with love as well as should be right. She's wonderful. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Thank you so much for being here and, and watching and supporting the channel. I appreciate it so much. Enjoy your day, and I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. Here we go. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're taking a look at paparazzi. What happens when somebody calls them on themselves? Yes, I'm looking at you, Megan. Versus actual harassment by the paparazzi. We're talking about Catherine. We're talking about Diana and the real, I mean, awfulness that they were put through by the paparazzi and the invasion, the intrusion versus calling the paparazzi on yourself and the imaginary lone paparazzi on a scooter. So we'll take a look at all that. I have lots of videos to go through. We'll take a look at photos and we'll break it all down and talk about the differences. So without further ado, let's jump right on in. So this was Catherine's 25th birthday. They weren't even engaged yet, but there was rumblings of a possible engagement I believe around this time and so they were camped outside of her Chelsea flat and this is the kind of stuff that she had to deal with there are other videos that go into they would do things to try to get a reaction out of her and we'll hear a paparazzi discuss it but um, by calling her names such as slag to try to get her to react because the react photos sold for more money even saw a disgusting story um, put out by William explaining that paparazzi had spit on Diana to try to get her reaction, to try to make her cry because those photos sold for more money. Because uh, I'm waiting for uh, Kate Middleton, who's about to come out because she goes to work every day. At what time she comes out? 8.15. She comes out at 8.15. Exactly 8.15? Yes. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> How much did you earn for that photo? Well, I made uh, at least uh, 3,000 pounds just in London and then overseas uh, a bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I wasn't exclusive, but uh, the pictures were sold everywhere, all over the papers. <laughs> Great. We can see her face, so that's what, what counts. You think you can sell this one? Maybe. Her face being mad. Uh, yeah, she, she always sells. 
she knows the tricks to uh, to make the pictures n unsellable, to make the pictures uh, worth nothing. Because she almost fell over there. If she fell, then the picture would have been really so. But don't you think it's awful to wait uh, for someone to fall? No, I mean it's. It would have been a situation where it would be an accident and uh, I would have caught the action, but it's not like I'm looking for it. It just happened, so that's why I'm thinking now, you know, if she fell, because she almost did, but I don't want her to get hurt. So again, private citizen at this point, this scumbag is talking about if she falls, he makes more money. Things like that. Um, I learned so much while researching this about, of course, I knew about the weighty Katie what I didn't realize is they even followed her around and called her that to try to get a reaction and then put it on the side of a bus. There are videos of her crying and pleading with them to just stop, to leave her alone, to stop following her. Come on. Come on. I'm not going to be in my hands. This is my private life. I'm not going to be in my hands. Guys, this is yeah, enough. Guys, let's go. Let's go. Guys, leave her alone. Guys, help. Oh. Oh, oh. No, come on. See you later. Okay, so again, truly awful behavior, scary with all the flashing and following and her begging them to please just stop and it's her home. Ugh. Heartbreaking to see, right? And then there are pictures like this of Diana, who is truly, she's running to get away from the paparazzi. They were everywhere always and a million clicks and her again asking them to back off even to the point where she would walk backwards like with her back facing the camera to get to places so they couldn't get the shot of her and then you have Diana here that realizes that the paparazzi is filming her and her children while they're on holiday they're on a ski vacation and she stops it so they can have a private family moment so there's Diana, and I love her expression here, by the way, but it, having to deal with the actual paparazzi following her around, being intrusive, and having to deal with that, and having to figure out ways to hide her face or tilt her body or whatever so they can't get the shot. Now, let's change gears a little bit, shall we? Let's take a look at Hank and Skank, Harold and Fraud, and their claims of paparazzi intrusion. I would like to quote Diana here and say, be quiet, Harry. Do we have that pap on the scooter again? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we do, really? Same guy? Same guy. Oh my God, how Watched him going to this park and then... Is he with us? Yes, sir, he was just ahead. There's a lot of people who think They've got such a problem with, with paparazzi. Yeah, those, um, the guys in the basement of the building, too, as we were doing that walk, they were recording, too, just so you're aware. So, again, with their lack of detail, somebody following them on a scooter, somebody knelt down on the plane to thank Megan for her service, somebody from the Lion King said they danced in the streets in South Africa. It's never specific details. And don't you think if the paparazzi were actually following them, they would show it on the documentary? They would love to show that off. No, instead we have video of them talking about it. And they talk about a lone guy on a scooter who <laughs> could have been an Uber Eats driver, right? I mean, it's so ridiculous. I don't believe that there's actually anybody there, but even if it was... It could just be a guy who was like, hey, there's Dumb and Dumber. Let me pull out my phone and take a picture. And since we're here talking about it, let's just remember 
that they couldn't actually show anybody following the car. They didn't have footage of it. So what did they do? They used other people's footage. Remember this? It turns out that they had used footage from Donald Trump's ex-lawyer. We don't get political here, so we don't have to discuss. But So he was leaving his flat to go start his prison sentence. And there you go. So you can see it there. And then also remember, they used footage from Katie Price arriving at court. I believe they also used footage from Emma Watson being followed by the paparazzi, maybe something to do with a Harry Potter premiere, even before they met. And then this shot. So they're pretending like people are following them. They don't even have examples to show, so they use other people's actual footage of being followed by paparazzi. So let's go into Megan specifically, because there's a history here of her calling the paparazzi on herself. Here she is interacting with a paparazzi who happened to know where she was at and what she was up to. Was asking her about suits. I didn't hear them call her any names or follow her or chase her. She doesn't seem to mind talking to them. She doesn't seem to be calling security or asking for help or anything like that. Nope. One lone photographer, paparazzi, whatever you want to call them, asking her about suits. But you guys, she sure likes to claim she was harassed. So let's dive further into this staging thing, that she stages her own paparazzi photos. Hell, we saw it just happen not long ago. Yeah, on that occasion, I was in Toronto, actually. One of the best sets I took of Megan was, um, was a set of um, her actually going to a florist. And at the florist, she literally was there. She was, she honestly facilitated she posed up for us. She smiled at us. Um, me and the other guy I was working with. And we got such a beautiful set of pictures. She talked to us. And at one point she was like, um, telling me, she's like, Oh, where are you from? I was like, I'm from London. She's like, well, you need to stop wearing that trench coat because we're in Toronto. You need to wear a puffer jacket. Um, Megan also used to organize setups where she would, um, she would ask an agency, Hey, I'm going to be turning up to a restaurant or an event. Can you photograph me coming in? So the only thing about that actually is as well is that. Like Megan has also posed with paparazzi there. I've actually seen images of her posing and standing next to paparazzi. I can even show you a picture after this. She's got a, like, the photographer's got her arm around. He might have his arm around it. He's standing right next to her. I remember the picture vividly. I remember the name of the photographer. Well, there's that. A photographer admitting that she staged the whole thing. This is the photo he's talking about. I believe it was in Revenge that they went into that as well. It was happening quite a bit when she first decided she needed to be in London. And here are some of the pictures that you can clearly see are staged. They don't know who she is. And the article goes on to say they didn't end up even selling these photos. I bring this up to remind you, this is one of the ways that they played victim. They have repeatedly told tall tales of paparazzi hounding, especially her, and how she would draw her curtains because she was afraid of them. If you ask me, it was all a sympathy play and a way to relate herself back to Diana, once again, her favorite sport. I would also like to draw your attention to that Oprah interview because I felt like she was being totally condescending toward Catherine and that she talked about, oh, it must have been hard. They called her Weighty Katie. Not going into the actual harassment behind it as we've seen in the videos instead it sounds like oh they were calling her a schoolyard name but instead i suffered all the ist words that she likes to throw around i mean tell me you called the paparazzi without telling me you called the paparazzi on yourself but i also want to say oh the irony the irony of claiming invasion of privacy when these two have been seen wearing wires and obviously reporting back private conversations. And yet when it suits them, they can claim victim and say, no, the paparazzi were all over them. It didn't happen to anybody else but them. And that's the exact, I mean, thing that just keeps me coming back for more. I just, it's just unbelievable to see. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps today. I had such a fun request. I had a request for the faces of the queen. You know, I love the queen so much. Huge fan, a lot of respect for her and all that she did. And so I thought this was such a great idea, such a good request. So I thought what we could do is take a look at our beautiful queen and 
take a look at her mini expressive faces because she did have a ton of them. Then we're going to take a look at her faces with Catherine versus her faces with Megan. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just take a look at some of my favorite pictures. So let's jump right on in and celebrate the queen. I love this so much. So <laughs> this is in no way disrespectful of the queen. What I love is that she couldn't hide how she felt off of her face. I feel like I'm in the same boat. You can always tell what I'm thinking because I can't hide it off my face. You can, same with the queen here. I love that you can always see her funny facial expressions. She's just very expressive. And so <laughs> these pictures, just gathering these really made me laugh. And we'll definitely look at her funny pictures. But I wanted to start out with some of her more mm, expressive slash emotive pictures. <laughs> I, just, I love it because usually, I mean, you just... They keep a straight face, right? But not the queen. And I love that. I love that you could tell when she was truly happy and when she was not. Just a few more of these. I don't know what the scenario or what the situation was here, but it just, it really, it makes me laugh quite a bit. I just love that she was so expressive and you could see it on her face when things would <laughs> happen around her. I just, I love it. You could just tell by her face. Okay, let's get into some of my favorites. Let's look at the queen with Catherine. Now, they were always said to have a really close relationship, and the queen was said to have really, truly loved Catherine as evidenced by giving her the royal family order, that yellow piece that you can see here in the picture. It's a really big deal. It's one of the highest honors that she could bestow, and it's for um, recognizing works of service. So she did bestow that on Catherine. So clearly there's a, you know, a tight relationship there. And I love it. So let's take a look at some of their pictures. I love the genuineness here of the photographs. There's no look at me going on. Just happy, comfortable moments. I'm sure it was tense anytime you're around the queen because you want to do the right thing and say the right thing and behave the right way. But it's pictures like this that I find so excellent because it's not forced. It's not anything. The queen seems like she's perfectly happy and, you know, perhaps being a little silly. And I love Catherine's genuine smile there. I love this picture of the queen, pretty in pink. I just, that outfit, I thought that color really suits her. They had a lot, but, but again, no disrespect for the queen. I love her, but I love the pink on her. And I love just the relaxed, happy smile. You guys, I could spend about 14 hours talking to you about how happy the queen was the day that William and Catherine got married. This is one of my favorite pictures. Just the, what's the word? The happiness, the jubilance showing in the pictures. It's there. It's palpable. And I love it. And again, you you can't force this stuff. You can just naturally see it on her face. This is genuine reaction to the day. Um, you know, seeing Catherine and, and the, the happiness of the wedding, the moment. I love this picture, picture too. Of course, on the left is uh, Catherine's mother and course the queen and just the happiness there it's fantastic right I love it and I love that the queen wore yellow such a happy color and again we got to see the happiness with the two of them carry on the happy faces the relaxed you know just again not forced no look at me moments just two people who enjoy each other's company so from here <laughs> we're gonna go into some Megan moments and you guys it's tough. It's hard to make this pivot. We're going to do it and then we're going to get back into some happy stuff, I promise. But let's jump into some Megan moments. Little different mood here, I would say. I would say the queen, she nailed it. She knew. <laughs> she knew. And um, I don't know. It makes me love her even more because, again, she couldn't hide it on her face. She knew that this was a terrible idea and that Harry's making a huge mistake. But yet she, st she still showed up. She was there for Harry and Meghan. Again, this huge, stupid, elaborate wedding throne, all of it. Um, and the queen was there. But, oh, I just, I, lo <laughs> I love that she can't hide it off her face. And again, just feel the mood from the pictures, right? It's completely different energy here. So we're, with Catherine and, and the queen, I could pull 100,000 pictures of them being happy and having, you know, being around each other. Where Megan and you know only did the seventy two something engagements, there's really not that many pictures of her and the Queen together, but some of the ones I found, I mean, this says everything I need to know, right? Again, the Queen knows she knew. Look at this picture here. I just 
I, it's a lot. I love it. I love the queen. She knew. I actually think this picture says everything you need to know, right? So the queen is now looking away and we got smug looking at the idiot ginger. Like, oh, my plan's working. <laughs> I fooled her. She doesn't know. Little does she realize. No, the queen's all right through her. And then we have these pictures, like the only <laughs> engagement, I believe, that the, these two did together. And I'm thinking there's a reason why. But um, there are some smiley pictures from the queen here. I believe that the queen was trying to help Megan at this point. Trying to make it seem like, you know, like that things were fine. But call me crazy, but look at the queen's face here. I think you can tell everything you need to know. Look at Megan. Her face is always, look at me. And like these, you know, rictus grins and over-the-top expressions for cameras. Whereas everybody else is just focusing on what else is going on in the area. And we got Robot, Doofus, and the Queen here. And again, I'd say, look at everybody's grin. Look at me. Camera's on me. And then the Queen's like, oh my god. When can I ditch these two? And here, um, I don't know what to say about this one. Just, I feel like Megan knows where the camera is, so look at me. Harry's a pouty doofus as per usual, and the queen's just trying to find her way away from these two. Yeah, not many pictures with the queen and Megan. I mean, that happens when you, you know, don't want to work or do, don't do events and stuff. But, um, but I want to end on some happy pictures. There are two pictures I have to show you that I just truly love so much. They're, they're just, they really make me smile and laugh. So let's take a look at this. And I've shown this one before, but it is truly one of my favorite pictures. So in case you don't know what's happening here, the queen, the queen came around the corner not knowing this was happening. Prince Philip decided to play a joke and dress up like this and surprise the queen. And the photographer happened to catch her expression when she realized that it was Prince Philip. I love it so much. It's such a happy picture. I love that he, you know, got this joke and I got to do this joke and I love that, you know, she found it so funny. And this picture. I always love this picture so, so much. I just really want you to look at the faces. So I believe this was Royal Ascot. They were trying to get out of the carriage. Sophie got caught and started to trip, trip and fall. I mean, the paper reports she almost fell out of the carriage. To me, it looks like she almost fell on Catherine. And so Catherine threw her hands up to catch her and help her. And this is the picture they got. And I love it so much. Even William looks like he's cracking up over in the corner. But it's just, both of their faces are excellent. And this is so something I would do. I try to be elegant and then trip my way out of the carriage. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here, you guys. I have something juicy for you today that I want to discuss. Okay, so this one is unlike some of my others because you'll see it jumps right in. Basically what happened is I shared this on Patreon. It went off really well. A lot of people really enjoyed it, so I thought I wanted to share it over here. So um, yeah, we're going to take a look. So you'll hear me talk to Patreon in this one. So that's what that's about. I do want to give a shout out. Thank you, Tim Tree Frog, for sharing this with me and bringing it to my attention. Also, I want to give credit to the original poster at Royal Magazine 179 for sharing this video and bringing it to our attention. Um, so I'm excited to dive into this one. I get a little heated, so bear with me on this. But uh, let's take a look at what I was talking about over on Patreon because it's juicy. Here we go. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Patreon. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I have something fun and juicy for you. I'm going to show you a video. A huge thank you to you who sent it to me. I really appreciate it. Um, that I just want you to watch it and then I want to react to it with you and I want to have a conversation with you about it. So let's take a look at this video. Here we go. Side note, the video is only 30 seconds long. It's juicy. I knew part of it. Didn't know the other part. Here we go. Okay, future Jen again. I forgot. He plays music over this. I can't play. So I'm just going to tell you what's happening. So this person, again, credit to Royal Magazine 179, shared this video. Now, we remember that Megan tells a story on Oprah of how the queen shared her blanket for warmth. She put it over my knees. You know the story. Well, in the video, of course, we've seen the queen didn't do that. I mean, that's not what happened. The queen 
put the blanket on herself. We don't see it going on naked. Um, which, again, we've talked about that, but here's where it gets interesting to me. This person alleges Megan made it up because Catherine actually was offered the blanket. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that's a minor detail, but it's not. And I'll get into why you'll hear in a second. But uh, this original poster shares this incredibly sweet moment where the queen offered Catherine a blanket after, you know, they had been at an event together. It was a sweet moment shared by this person. So let's get into why it's kind of unbelievable. Here we go. You guys, how nuts is this? You know, we knew the story, of course. We'd heard it on Oprah. And it seems like just such a small detail. But then when you really stop and think about it, really think about it. She stole this. I, she stole the story because it actually did happen to Catherine, Princess of Wales. <laughs> I'm going to refer to her as Catherine for ease sake. But, you know, I, I'm all, all due respect to Catherine, Princess of Wales. Okay. She stole the story from Catherine. Jealous Meg is such a psycho. She studied it, stole the story for herself. I just keep obsessing about details like this. And yes, they are small details, but when you add them together, they're not small. Okay, so the other one I obsess about, and I'm sure you know this one, I've talked about it before. I actually made a video about it, about that whole, do you remember Megan's whole, is he kind when talking about Harry? You know, that BS. Well, come to find out, allegedly, that was another story she stole from Catherine. So that was one of the things that came up. Um, one of Catherine's friends, I'm trying to remember the story. It's been a little while since I talked about it. But if I remember correctly, it's like one of Catherine's friends revealed that was Catherine's question about William. Is is he kind? Is he nice? Some, some form of that. Well, Psycho Megan allegedly stole that story as well. So I just keep thinking about this, right? Imagine you're Catherine. You've worked your rear off. You've had to deal with the press for years. You've had to deal with, uh, you know, the pressures of joining the royal family, all of it, for years. You've earned your spot. Catherine has earned that spot. And, and, and everybody's adoration and trust, I believe she's earned it. You know, she's proven herself through the years. She's had to deal with all this from, again, the media, from everybody. And then Meg comes along, right? is horrible to Catherine, is horrible to her kid, probably kids plural, but especially Charlotte, it sounds like, Princess Charlotte. And um, uh, I, I just, I'm just blown away by this. And, I, and again, I know it's a tiny detail, but it's not because it's psychotic. Just, it's like, I, all I can think of is like fatal attraction, bunny boiler stuff, right? It's psychotic. To steal Catherine's story, and make it her own. And and the thing is, she just assumed, talking about uh, Megan, just assumed none of us would figure it out. Um, ha ha. But just, just think about this. She assumed none of us would figure it out. And this is just another way for her to jab at Catherine. How crazy is that? I, I just, it's not even that I'm shocked anymore because I'm not. It's more of just, that is such truly I, juvenile mean girl. It's more than juvenile because even juveniles don't act like this. Mean behavior. It is mean. <laughs> it is words way worse than mean, but just at a base level, it is mean to come in and be like this to Catherine and then to steal all her stories and then to use them against the family that Catherine loves <laughs> and has built, you know, with William, and so, it's just unbelievable. And for to what end? Just to hurt Catherine? What, to try to win William? We've seen these pictures, you know? It's just unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. This is the kind of stuff that I get obsessed with. This is why on the main channel, I do bring up stuff like this, and, and people call me petty. I'm fine with it. It's not me being petty. I'm trying to remind everybody, and I know you guys know I'm not preaching the choir, I'm trying to remind everybody about things like this because it's insane behavior. And I feel like Catherine can't speak up for herself. So here we are speaking up <laughs> because it's crazy. Just put yourself in the situation. You're, you know, again, you've joined this family. You've worked so hard. And I'm talking about Catherine and built up your reputation deservingly so, right? Um, and then here comes this horrible person, Megan. 
to try to come and destroy it all. It, it really is. It's shocking, right? To hear it, it just blows my mind. It really does. Guys, uh, I'm just stuck on this detail. And so this is where I want you to chime in. Did you know that? I mean, I'm sure you knew about the Megan telling the story because it's one of, you know, Megan told the story in Oprah. But did it occur to you that this is actually what happened when Catherine and Megan stole the story? Because it didn't with me. It's the same thing with the, is he kind story. I just say it like that because Megan was laid on so thick at that point. I asked, is he kind? Ah, uh, bullshit. She doesn't care. Uh, anyway, I knew about the Megan story, of course, about the queen shared her blanket with me because I'm the favorite. Um, but I didn't even think about that it was a real event that happened with Catherine. Again, one that she earned by building up her majesty's, you know, respect and trust and all the things and showing love for William, all the things, you know, showing love for the family. And then here comes Megan stealing the story regurgitating this shit on Oprah. And then I think about the queen and I don't want to think too hard about this because it does make me sad. Now we've all heard the stories about the queen watching the Oprah interview and being upset about it, rightfully so. And then I just wonder, do you think she thought, you lying bitch, you know, when she heard the story about um, the blanket, the Oprah blanket? Unbelievable. So here's where I want you to chime in. What other stories can you think of like this. And I don't mean the big ones. We all know the big ones. I mean the small ones. Like making up a detail about the queen sharing her blanket. Even though it truly happened to Catherine. We saw the video where the queen didn't do this with Megan. And we know this because Megan worked like 12 minutes with the royal family. <laughs> and we got to see. We could see the one time they were in the car together like that. And it didn't happen. Isn't that really? I mean, I guess that's, you know, if you want to get to a base level, what narcissistic behavior, but it's truly bizarre. It's psychotic. I keep going back to that word, but it is like to, to make up the story like that, that again, upon first glance seems like just a minor detail, but no, it's so much more than that. She's stealing Catherine's life and her stories, even the small stories. She's making her own. Ooh, that's some fatal attraction shit right there. You guys, I'm obsessed. Anyway, let me know if you can think of a small detail like this that Megan might have stolen from Catherine. Today, we're talking Megan and Catherine. And I really have been working on this video for a while. I wanted to deep dive some. I'm sure I've missed some because there's a lot to choose from. But some of the ways Megan has been rude and disrespectful, especially to Catherine. So I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody who helped contribute to this video. I put it out on Patreon and my patrons really delivered some great examples. I had mentioned it in a video here on the main channel a long time ago. Again, you guys all came to my rescue and gave me examples as well. Thank you for that. I'm sure there's stuff that I missed that I would love to hear about in the comments in case we end up doing a follow-up to this video. So please keep the comments rolling in. So this is in no particular order. I kind of vaguely did it what I thought was time order, but I'm sure some will be out of order. I just wanted you to see side by side some of the examples of Megan's outright rude, jealous, envious, disrespectful behavior toward Catherine. Let's start off with the TIG, the defunct blog that is rumored to be coming back, we'll see, and where Megan had written about Princess Catherine years ago. Now remember, she claimed to have no knowledge of Harry or his family and uh, didn't know who has was, but seemed to know a lot when she was writing about it in her blog. Wait, you're telling me she lied about something? What? That's so not like her. Just kidding. She lies about everything. So she writes, grown women retain this childhood fantasy talking about becoming a princess. Just look in pomp and circumstance surrounding the royal wedding and endless conversation about, as she calls her, Princess Kate. Because of course she wouldn't address her correctly. You guys, this just screams jealousy from, from the word go. She writes, we're definitely not talking about Cinderella here. I mean, see, she's digging at her already. It's her wedding day and she's writing this. Um, yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Little girls dream of being princesses. I, for one, was all about She-Ra, princess of power. Listen, it's her blog. She can write what she wants. She chose to write this crap. 
But it just shows, again, the level of lying, delusion, narcissism, whatever you want to call it, all of the above, where she pretends not to know this family, and yet she was able to write this whole piece on it and basically calling Catherine out for what? Her wedding? For her becoming a princess? I, absolutely ridiculous, right? So it started from this. Now let's talk the ripped jeans, because good Lord, have we seen and heard a lot about that. And P.S., this picture cracked me up. I found it online when I was searching for the ripped jeans stuff. And uh, I don't know who the person who made it was. I would totally shout them out. This is hilarious. Ripped jeans. Okay, so here's the dig. On the Netflix documentary, if we can call it that, I'm using air quotes, on the Netflix uh, live fest, she told a story of meeting her future brother and sister-in-law in barefoot and in ripped jeans and how they were taken aback, painting the picture that they are stuffy while she's easygoing, you guys. She's easy breezy, down to earth, the most casual, right? Uh, she demonstrated the ripped jeans look when she made her relationship public with Harry by wearing ripped jeans and the husband shirt at Invictus Games. Look, guys, she's so easygoing and down to earth. And P.S., I've mentioned this before, that she likes to brag about meeting her future in-laws in ripped jeans and yet likes to be photographed doing charity work in Cartier bracelets and watches. So by giving details like this, again, she's painting them as stuffy as they never have a relaxed moment talking about William and Catherine versus she's just an easy, fun, loving, down to earth girl. But might I remind everybody, she outspent everybody, all the other European royals for the 72 engagements that she had. Not so easy going and down to earth, are you, Meg? So it was also during this Netflix documentary that she claimed that she was a hugger. And that she didn't realize it would be jarring for Catherine for her to give her a hug. She said it was jarring for a lot of Brits. I find that so completely just utter nonsense. Because I don't care where you're from. If you don't know someone, you don't necessarily want them to hug you. But even so, she's trying to make it seem like Catherine is this ice queen, this cold robotic person, where she's warm and cozy, you guys. She's a hugger. P.S. For someone who sure likes to cry and claim that she was labeled all types of names, she likes to label British people things like the ist words and the uh, jarred from hugs. Uh, bullshit. They're some of the warmest people I've met. It's just absolutely ridiculous to make a statement like that. You're a stranger. She probably just didn't want you to hug her. And can you blame her? You ended up being a monster. But nonetheless, let's take a look at some warm, wonderful photos of Catherine hugging people. Hey, imagine that. Megan lied about something else. I'm shocked. But seriously, though, what is her problem? So she's trying to make, again, trying to paint Catherine like she's this icy cold bitch. We all see through it. Here's William hugging people. Hmm. Imagine that warm, friendly, kind people. And speaking of being petty, let's talk that book Spare. Spare. Um, (laughs) Remember when there was a story told? Yes, it was technically written well, not even technically as ghostwritten, um, but written by Harry, but it had Megan's fingerprints all over. And there was a story in there about how Megan asked Catherine to borrow her lip gloss and she couldn't believe that Catherine recoiled at this. Oh no, what in the world? Yeah, because it's gross. You're a stranger to her. So you're going to keep this in your mind that she grimaced at you borrowing her lip gloss, and then you're going to tell the world about it in your husband's stupid book. Okay, Petty. The good news is I think most people saw through it and sided with Catherine on this one because, ew, you're a stranger. And since you're continuously taking digs at her and being petty, I thought I'd be petty and show you her makeup fail right here. Hmm, Enjoy that. Okay, so let's move on to the glares at Catherine. We have lots of examples like this one where she's, well, quite literally glaring at Catherine. If you didn't know she was jealous before, (laughs) if you couldn't hear it in everything she said, you could probably notice it in these pictures. How about a lovely carriage ride with this? Huh? Warm, cozy, friendly? I don't think so. And when she's not busy glaring at Catherine, she's busy staring at another one. Oh, that's right. William. She loves to stare at William. Lots of examples of this. I actually have a video called 
the stare where it's a lot of pictures of her pretending to stare at Harry, but then, you know, who she actually wants to look at, as you can tell in these photos and the glares at Catherine. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. The stare. But yeah, another way just to dis disrespect Catherine. All right, how about this one? When, again, in the book Spare, it was claimed that William and Catherine were huge fans of the show Suits. I know, I can hear you laughing. Believe me, I was cracking up too. They <laughs> Basically, through his book, she's using it to say that they were huge fans of hers. And he tells this story of how when they found out it was Megan that he was dating, they turned to each other and said, blank off. And they ended up telling him that they're regular, no, religious viewers of Suits. Never mind that, according to you guys, Suits wasn't even available in the UK then. Again, why would they let the truth get in the way of a good story, right? To me, I just saw it as another way to belittle Catherine especially and make it seem like she was a fangirl of Megan's, please. All right, let's get into the big one. The one that popped into my head when I was first putting or thinking about putting together this list. You ready? Megan made Catherine cry. And not just that. She allegedly bullied her three, what was it? She was four at the time, maybe three, four at the time. A little girl over what? Jealousy? I don't care what the excuse is. There is no excuse. She was a little girl. She was horrible to Catherine. She was horrible to Charlotte. She got her friend's daughter, again, allegedly. She got her friend here, Jessica Maroney, who's also disgusting, and her daughter to bully Charlotte as well. And as detailed in the book Revenge by, T Revenge by Tom Bauer, Catherine tried to still, still be the bigger person and tried to still be nice to Megan after all this, took her flowers, Megan slammed the door in her face, threw the flowers in the trash, and used it against Catherine in the Oprah interview and tried to make it seem like Catherine made her cry and then Catherine felt bad about it so she brought her flowers. Bullshit. If you need more proof of this, I would recommend the body language guy who broke this down and showed the moment where she had been kind of smiling at the kids in church, but then as soon as she sees little Princess Charlotte, she glares at her. Princess Charlotte looks away. It is so horrible to watch. I hate it so much. Megan can rot in hell. But this is all, I believe, to torment Catherine. To make her feel bad. To make her, I don't know, I don't know where she was trying to go with this. I guess mess with her head. To mess with her kid. Absolutely disgusting, awful behavior. Adults don't act like this. People don't act like this. And then, still, went on Oprah, told a bunch of bullshit, and tried to get sympathy for herself after doing all that. All right, ready for the next one? Okay, the one who loves to give speeches and word salads on being a feminist and kindness and all the other BS she peddles. How about the time she, she was mad that she got a reprimand for telling Catherine she has baby brain. That's right, there was a whole story in Spare where she blamed Catherine's hormones for her forgetting some detail. It doesn't even matter. She called her baby brain. And again, talked about the hormones. So much for feminism, huh? Straight up said it in the book, and then still wants to be painted as the victim of all this. All right, ready for another really obnoxious example? Yeah, me too. Take a look at this picture. What is this? Beautiful, except for the people on the left. Um, <laughs> look at the beautiful picture of baby Louis christening. Can I just say, look at Charlotte. Oh my gosh, so cute. Okay. So the men were asked to wear blue, as evident in the photo here, and the ladies were asked to wear creams and pale blue, as evident in the photo here. Oh, but what do you see? Guess who couldn't be bothered, who had to make a statement to mess with the photos. And you might be like, well, that's kind of like no big deal, except for that it is because she wanted to stand out in this photo at Baby Lily's christening. Couldn't stand to have the attention not on her. Had to try to ruin Catherine's photos. Look at the backdrop. Look at the color scheme. Look to the left. Need more proof? Okay, this is Lucy Middleton and Hannah Carter. They are both godparents to Baby Louie. And look, pale blue. See, they were asked to dress in a certain color. 
not this one, can't be bothered, would rather play victim and say something. I'm actually surprised she didn't say, they didn't tell me. Oh, but they did, because your husband seemed to get the memo. Why didn't Dum Dum say, what the F are you wearing? Because he has no balls. I just think it's rude. It's spiteful. She's a terrible person. Here's another example of it. Has to have the attention on her at all times. And again, if it were the other way around, wouldn't she scream from the rooftop? I asked them all to wear a certain color, but Catherine couldn't be bothered to do it because she's the ist words that I like to throw around. And finally, this last example, I'm sticking on the end here because it just shows the overall problem. So Megan calling the paparazzi on herself. Yes, it came out that she called the paparazzi on herself. She likes to do that, right? See background for details. She was so upset that the, that Catherine got the attention on her own that she decided to turn it into a totally different kind of argument in the Oprah interview. It says she basically took the opportunity to call Catherine Weighty Katie and remind us all of that horrible name. She tried to compare the treatment that they each got and said that them being rude to, to Catherine is not the same as the ist treatment that she got. You guys, I cannot with this BS. I actually made a video on this that I would highly encourage you to go watch. And it shows how Catherine was treated before she married Prince William. And it will break your heart because it was horrendous. She was followed. She was in tears. I've just not seen anything like it versus this one who can't stop calling the paparazzi on herself. But she's so jealous of the attention that Catherine got, she decided to turn it into a race issue, I guess for sympathy as well, and decided to throw into the interview, just for fun, remind everyone that Catherine was once tormented with the term weighty Katie to the point where she had somebody had taken out an ad on the side of a bus to call her that because she and William had dated so long before they got engaged and got married. Just absolutely just ridiculous, ridiculous, horrible behavior from, from Megan and further abuse of Catherine. So did not, not only did Catherine have to deal with Megan and put up with her antics, this, you know, with her 72 engagements, no, her time with the royal family. She then had to deal with this again, this coming back up because Megan's the one bringing it back up. And just a fun reminder that uh, Harry then changed it and said, oh, no, 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 we didn't say that the family was the ist words. It's, uh, it's the press that said that. We would never say that. So they can't even stick with their story. So then what was the point of telling all that? Just to make yourself seem like a victim? Oh, no, I know what it was. It was just another dig at Catherine, your favorite person to take digs at. Well, unless you're bullying her small child. Ugh, just absolutely horrible, horrible behavior. I just, I think Catherine's just a saint for putting up with this as well as she did. I really do. And good for her for not having to deal with these two anymore. Ugh, horrible, despicable people. We're talking Megan. That's right. What else is new, right? We're talking the story coming out that, oh, you guys, brace yourselves for this one. You ready? Allegedly, Megan is worried that Catherine will meddle in peace talks, according to a report. Oh, boy, I have a lot to say about this one. I'm just so glad you're here. Hong Kong, everybody. All right, so this nonsense is coming out of the New York Post, and I just wanted to pull it up just to talk about it because we know It's absolutely ridiculous. There is no way she wants peace talks. I believe that Harry probably does, and I'm not trying to make him a better person. He's not. Um, But because he realizes he has no other options, maybe. But I don't think there there is any way in this world she wants peace talks. Because then she'd have to admit, even if not out loud, she'd have to admit that she was wrong and that... Every, you know, like all these claims she made that we've obviously know are untrue and we've seen the lies collapse in on themselves. How would that go for her? How would that work? She wouldn't be able to ever admit she was wrong. So I just, she doesn't want peace talks. You know, who am I kidding? He doesn't want peace talks either. You know, I, I gotta feel like, this is my opinion, the behind the scenes, his marriage is absolutely imploding. We know the reports that he's staying at hotels, even this latest photo shoot with the gym it doesn't make sense. Somebody pointed out the gym is like two hours from his house. So people are speculating he's staying, you know, at other places and, you know, the whole thing. 
my personal feeling on that is that would be the only catalyst that I could see where he would try to reconcile with the family. Not that he deserves a reconciliation, nothing of the sort. What I'm saying is that would drive him because who else does he have, right? She's alienated. Well, he's alienated himself from his family, his friends, everybody else. So who else would he have? So that's the only scenario where I could see Harry trying to reconcile, but no way, no way does Megan want peace talks. She wants it in the paper, so that way she'll look like she's trying to get the ball rolling to make peace, even though they're the ones that, you know, threw the grenade at it. They want to be the heroes, martyrs, whatever you want to say, victims, perpetual victims, where they are trying to promote peace. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. Meghan Markle is said to be worried that her sister-in-law will meddle in alleged peace talk. I'll tell you what, Meghan Markle isn't worried about anything except for Meghan Markle, okay? That's all this is. I just, it's, this is another one of those crazy stories behind the scenes, so, you know, bear with me because I'm picking it apart, but I'm sorry, it deserves it. This is bullshit. All right. Uh, what peace talks next week, by the way? There... This doesn't make any sense. There are no peace talks. We've been through this. There were stories that there were going to be peace talks, but my feeling on that was the stories were planted by the IBLW, I have to think that out, Instagram loving bee wife, um, because she wants their names. I'm saying it's either her or management company, one and the same, something like that. Somebody behind the scenes, I'm assuming it's her, is trying to get their name in the same sentence as the royal family, which is crazy if you think about that, how far they have fallen. It's kind of funny, right? Um, they're trying to get their names in the same sentence. It's my belief they put out these stories of, oh, we're going to reconcile with the family, oh, or, or Harry's going to meet up with the king. I heard those stories. It's all BS. I'm sorry, but the royal family has moved on. These a-holes continue to be a-holes and show themselves time and time again. So what's that definition of insanity? The royal family's not insane. They're not going to keep, I don't know, trying with these two because they're the ones that imploded everything. But let's play the game, shall we? Let's pretend like for a split second, this article has a modicum of truth to it. It doesn't, but let's play. All right. So you're telling me that Harry and Meghan, again, we know the history went on TV, lied about these people, bullied an elderly woman who happened to be the Queen of England, Harry's grandmother. You know all the things. Okay, it gets me very heated. They did all these things. And then you're telling me that now Meghan behind the scenes is pushing for peace? I don't think so. It doesn't make any sense. Meghan doesn't know how to do anything except for lie, grift, and look for sympathy. So <laughs> none of those would fit into this narrative whatsoever. So she could never forgive the royal family. So if you ask me, and and listen, let me, let me preface what I'm about to say by saying, I don't like it when people actually blame Megan for pulling Harry away from his family. Harry's a grown ass man. Harry knew what he was doing. He helped implode everything as well. So Harry's just as guilty and sometimes more than she is. So that's my thought on that. Okay. Having said that, let me say this. It is in Megan's own best interest, which is the only thing she looks out for, to keep Harry away from them. Because she doesn't want to reconcile, because how will she play victim? How would she explain? She'll never explain all the lies, but all the lies that they told on Oprah. You can't. You cannot explain it. All the lies, the double talking, the contradicting themselves. And, and I use Oprah. It's been everywhere on the podcast, in the books, you name it, they've done it. You can't explain that. It doesn't make any sense, it's, which is why I never will understand the sugars. But that's a side point. It's my opinion that Megan wants to keep Harry af as far away as she can. Keep him brainwashed. He's an idiot. Um, <laughs> they deserve each other, I swear. Anyway... Because then she can, I don't know, dust off their titles when she needs it while they can before they lose them. I'm not sure. But let's let's play devil's advocate a bit further and say this is all true. She wants them to reconcile. She wants them to make nice, nice. She doesn't, believe me. But let's just play, again, devil's advocate. All right. She has a history of bashing Catherine. They both do. I've done a whole video of it. 
go check that out if you haven't seen it. I go over example after example of both of them, but especially Megan, being horrible to Catherine. And so I feel like this article is just furthering that. It's more being horrible to Catherine. Like, oh, Megan wants him to make up, but Catherine doesn't. What? What in the world? The ego on this woman. What did Catherine do to her? Have the audacity to marry William when <laughs> Megan couldn't? There's actually a comment under this article that I want to read because it's so well said and I'm so frustrated. I can't even think straight right now. So... <laughs> This person did a better job of explaining exactly my frustration with this whole article. Here we go. It's from Veronica. All right. Meghan Markle should hope that Catherine will, quote, meddle in any peace talk. Catherine has 20 plus years of experience in the royal family and has proven herself to be a calming and intelligent force in the family. She has learned the soft diplomacy at the hands of Queen Elizabeth and is just the person to be involved in any alleged meeting among Charles, William, and Harry and the palace courtiers. All respect for her for the admirable job she's doing within the family. Catherine is a true feminist. She does not play into Meghan's game of tearing women down as she is trying to do with Catherine. Megan would do well to rely on her husband's sister-in-law to be an influencer in the true meaning of the word within the family. Veronica, will you marry me? No, seriously, Veronica, so well said, so beautifully written, so much better than I could possibly articulate at this moment. When I get frustrated, I get tongue-tied. And just <laughs> Anyway, this is so well said and exactly my feeling as well. Megan should hope that Catherine would quote metal. Of course, I don't believe any of this article. None of it's true. There are no peace talks, but, but Megan should hope that Catherine would metal. All right. But going back to the original article, he's going to be in London for the annual well child charity event. We've discussed this. Um, I just don't, I don't, I don't believe any of it. It says during a short stint, He's reportedly going to take part in a healing conversation with his father. I don't think so. Nobody's got time for these two. He, he's had every opportunity, right? Let's just say after the Oprah interview, he went, oh, no, I messed up. Well, then his stupid book came out. So, yeah, no, tough. He, that's not a mess up. That's a, a pattern, right, of harassing Charles, William, Catherine, and a lot of them, right? That's not a mess up. Okay. Markle, okay, is not expected to join for the so-called summit. Yeah, no, I wouldn't think so. Again, I don't believe there's a summit, but let's play devil's advocate and say that there is. Nobody wants her there, right? What is the point? What? Nothing productive would happen. We've heard about the Sandringham summit right before as they were stepping down where he wanted her there and then wanted her there on video conference, allegedly, according to those books we read. And everybody said, no, because we can't be guaranteed she's not recording it or going to chime in or whatever she's going to do. No, mm -mm, she'll make it about herself. No way. The insider apparently goes to say that he has tons of respect, talking about Harry, has tons of respect for Catherine, despite his relationship with his brother. Okay, no, he does not. No, he has a history of being an a-hole to her ever since... Megan has come into the scene and and I don't know maybe it was before Megan but he sure as shit has show, had a weird way of showing his respect to her since Megan's been on the scene. You ready for this bunch of nonsense? Okay, me neither. Megan will not be happy if he goes ahead with this. Of course she wouldn't. Because again, I mean she'd never admit she was lying about everything. But it'd be like an admission of lying, right? Because <laughs> you would <laughs> I can't. I can't even with this. All right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Megan can't help but feel that Catherine is meddling in their business. I'm sorry. Which one of you guys is meddling? I don't see Catherine out doing podcasts about her stint with the royal family. It's just you, Megan. I don't see Catherine using her husband's book <laughs> as a way to write about herself in a crappy TV show. Oh, no, wait. No, that was you, Megan, that did that. That's not Catherine. That's you meddling. The post has reached out to Markle's reps for comment, and yeah, 
shocker. Nobody had anything to say. This is all nonsense. This is coming from Megan or her people, in my opinion. Anything they can, anything they can do to try to drag Catherine down. It's it's crazy. And and her 12 followers, I'm talking about Megan's 12 followers, the Sugars, will latch on to this and be like, oh yeah, Megan's just trying to make peace talks. Catherine's, I don't know, foiling, whatever. They couldn't use a word that big. But anyway, <laughs> trying to spoil it. This is all a bunch of BS. Megan and Harry continue to be the worst people and... This is exactly why. (laughs) It's not just when they're doing their books and podcasts. It's the behind the scenes crap like this. Putting out articles like this. Taking unnecessary jabs at Catherine for no reason. For no reason except for she hasn't been meddling. She's been, you know, being a wife and a mom and (laughs) the future queen. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking weddings. That's right. I thought, you know what? Let's deep dive. Let's take a look. I want to see the differences. I want to see things like the engagement ring differences, the wedding makeup, the tiaras. Let's take a look. Let's judge all of it. (laughs) Let's have fun. I'm going to need your comments. You got to let me know which ones you preferred on each detail, and we will discuss all of it. Thank you so much for being here. Let's jump right in. All right, let's jump into the good stuff. Let's start out with the engagement ring. So on the left, of course, we have Meghan Markle's, and on the right, we have Catherine's. So Catherine's famously belonged to Princess Diana. It's a 12 carat sapphire encircled with a halo of diamonds set in 18 carat white gold. It was it was acquired in 1981 and of course Prince William gave it to Catherine in 2010. So a cute thing about this is he he gave a quote that says it meaning the ring it is very special to me and Catherine is very special to me now as well. Um, It's only right that the two be put together. It's my way of making sure that my mother didn't miss out on today. Isn't that sweet? All right, let's move over to Megan's engagement ring. So this was given to her in 2017. It's a three stone ring. So the stones on either side of that main diamond there actually belong to Diana. The main stone was uh, from Botswana. Now, fun fact about this ring... In their engagement interview, the questioner asked, said, tell us about your ring. Prince Harry said the ring is obviously yellow gold because that's what her favorite. That's exactly how he said it. And the main stone itself I source from Botswana. And the little diamonds either side are from my mother's jewelry collection. Meghan Markle then says, it's beautiful. He designed it. It's incredible. So... Just think about that because what happened? Well, she redesigned it. So the one on the left is the original. The one on the right is the redesign. So everything I could find on Google, I'm no jeweler, said that it's the same stone and the same, I guess you call them baguettes, the side stones of Diana's, but that the band was set in the pave diamonds. I just find it funny after saying she loves the gold and and she's saying it's perfect and then she redesigns it. But I will say I personally actually like the redesign better. Um, maybe gives it a more modern update, but it's just, it's just more, you know, more of them being them. So again, here are your choices. You have Megan's on the left, you have Catherine's on the right. You know I gotta do it. I'm always picking Catherine's now. It's not because it's Catherine. I really would. I would pick this ring every day because it's gorgeous. I personally love blue. I love sapphire. I think it's so beautiful. So eye-catching. It photographs beautifully. You know, every time you see her, you see this gorgeous ring. Um, I, I do think Megan's is pretty, but I think I could probably go out and find someone with a similar design. Maybe not size, but similar design. Whereas... Catherine's is just so unique. It befits, it, you know, it befits a, a princess. All right. You know, I had to look at this. So here are the official engagement photos from the couples. I got to do it, you guys. I mean, look, look at Catherine and William. That is not fake. You can feel the love. You can feel the charm, the charisma just screaming off this photo. They just... They look like a happy and in love couple. Now, I'm I'm really, even though I can't stand them, I'm not shitting on Harry and Meghan. I think it's a nice photo of them. 
But I just think it's more posed. It's more, mm, I don't know, actor maybe? I don't know. It feels like, okay, show me a couple who's in love. And so you pose yourself like this, whereas when I see William and Catherine's photo, I think, well, there's a couple that's in love, you know. Um, I can't look at these photos without mentioning Megan's horribly expensive dress. While I, I have said before, I think the dress design is actually kind of cool. I hate the from the waist down. It's that horrible, fluffy, tiered thing. But on top, I think it's nice. It's just not at all appropriate for a royal situation. I don't think, I don't think it's a great engagement dress. I think this is something you would wear to like, I don't know, some sort of Hollywood party, not, not this situation. Okay. So here are, this is the day that the couples gave the interviews, their engagement interviews. They go out or they do the photographs with the press and then they do their interviews. And you can see this. I have to point out Megan and Harry's photo is so weird. This photo has always struck me as so weird. Her her body language, her I understand that she, they're always all over each other, but I'm saying like it's it's bizarre. It's <laughs> I just don't understand standing like that for photos. And I would like to talk to you for about 14 hours about Catherine's dress here. This is one of my all-time favorite dresses she's ever worn. I love it. And that's saying something because she wears some gorgeous dresses. But damn, I love this one so much. Again, I'm partial to blue, so it might have something to do with that. And I'm partial to her. But she just looks so gorgeous and happy. And I, I just love this photo. Look how happy they look. All right, and then you have the interviews. I, I'm not trying to cut anybody's faces off here. It's just the, the sizes, the screen wouldn't play nice with me. But I'm sorry, I crack up every time I see that picture to the left. I mean, you talk about somebody that's like, what is it, the cat that swallowed the canary? Like somebody that got their hooks into somebody else and <laughs> could not be happier about it? There you go. I would say that perfectly sums up that look. What can I say about William and Catherine? They're gorgeous. She look I mean, she just looks so stunning. She's she's beautiful. The necklace, everything. The hair is so shiny and oh, I love her. But really, seriously, they look relaxed, they look happy, they look excited. All right. I did some Googling to try to find the wedding invitations. Unfortunately, the one on the left, that's Megan and Harry's. It the only picture that I could find of it was at this angle and kind of blurry like this. I wish I could show it to you clearer, but literally this is all I could find. I mean, you know, I can't stand Harry and Meghan, but I do like the scripty font on theirs. I would say a tad better. Um, maybe theirs is more dramatic. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I guess I'm going to lean toward that one as much as it pains me. I do like the, again, the cursive on theirs a little better, but still team Catherine and William. All right, let's take a look at these wedding dresses. You know it had to be done. There you go. <laughs> I have had so much to say about Megan's wedding dress lately. I, I'm, I guess I'm just going to jump into hers first. It's just so boring. I, I'm bored by it. I've said it before. It's just the nothing about it is flattering. And what's funny is because of the way that these pictures are being compared. They're far away. It actually looks better here in this picture than it does up close. So here you go. See, it's just kind of boring and doesn't have a lot of shape to it and no details. Just, I just don't understand what this look she was going for. I don't think there was a look. And so many of you have said she was probably so difficult to work with, with the designers changing her mind and everything else that we've heard that uh, this is what they ended up with. I just, I really truly wonder, does she look back this and think, oh yeah, I look great. Like, <laughs> I'm sure she probably thinks she looks great and everything, but I just don't understand this look at all and I never will. And then you have this. I will always love this dress. It's so beautiful. Look at the details. That's what it is for me. It's all the detail. It's just so elegant and, and I like the shape of it. I like the texture, I, I I like that it's interesting. It's interesting to look at. There's so much going on. And the bottom flows out so beautifully. And I just, I love this dress. I truly do. It's, it's like it covers everything, but yet it's still kind of sexy. I, there's something about it. I just love this dress. So let's take a look up close. So again, you can see the details 
on Catherine's dress and no detail on Megan's dress. And I just remember being so bummed because I was truly excited for their wedding. I kept thinking, you know, we got so much with Catherine and Williams. We got so much in the looks and everything else. And we got nothing with Megan's. I don't understand it. I keep going into this hair. This hair makes no sense at all. It's just messy. Let's talk wedding tiaras. So when I was researching this, I did some Googling on Catherine's tiara because I've talked at length about Megan's tiara recently. But um, so Catherine had supposedly had her heart set on wearing a delicate flower crown, which would have it would have totally fit in with a quintessentially English wedding, according to Google. Um, I'm not English, so I don't, I can't speak to that. But anyway, uh, tradition stepped, you know, took over and the queen ended up lending her this gorgeous Cartier halo tiara. It's made up of 739 brilliant cut diamonds, 149 baguette diamonds. And like I say, it was lent by the queen, of course. It just absolutely gorgeous uh, unbelievably gorgeous its beginnings go back to 1936 when george the sixth had it commissioned and it just it's spectacular so megan's tiara is something of a controversy not the one she wore but of course the one that she's rumored to have wanted that ended up causing a big old fight with her and prince harry and against uh, the queen's dresser angela kelly but this one is known as Queen Mary's Bandeau Tiara. It's a royal family heirloom and, of course, loaned to her by Her Majesty the Queen. It's comprised of a flexible band with 11 different sections, each covered in large and small diamonds. The diamonds ti tiara's main focal point is a detachable brooch with a center stone surrounded by nine smaller diamonds. So traditionally, the tiara has been spotted with a sapphire as a center stone, but Megan opted to swap the blue jewel out for a diamond instead, also lent to her by Queen Elizabeth. So I personally, I love them. I do love them both. I'm, I'm going to have to pick Catherine's. But if I were to go with Megan's, which is not a bad second choice, I would pop out the diamonds and go back to the sapphire. I, again, that's me. I personally love a sapphire, so I'd probably pick that one. Um, as you recall, the <laughs> dispute was over an emerald tiara that ultimately Eugenie wore. Uh, but that was the one that was rumored that Megan really wanted to wear. So again, I want to know in the comments, let me know which one are you picking? Are you picking Catherine's? Are you picking Megan's? And if you pick Megan's, are you popping the diamond out and putting back in the sapphire? Are you leaving it as is? Okay. So now we have the wedding bouquets. The one on the left is Megan's. The one on the right is Catherine's. Catherine's, it's made up of lilies, which are for the return of happiness, hyacinths for steady love, ivy for fidelity and friendship, and myrtle, the emblem of matrimony. Megan's on the left were composed of scented sweet peas, lily of the valley, jasmine, and According to this article I found, because I know nothing about flowers, it included forget-me-nots that were handpicked by Harry from the couple's private garden at Kensington Palace, which were Princess Diana's favorite flowers. So from here, we have them in their dresses and veils, and they go for their carriage rides. Then we're going to take a look at their reception dresses. So let's take a look and compare what's going on there. All right, I really need to know which one of these you're going to pick because this is so hard for me. <laughs> I got to go with my first instinct. Don't hate me. You know, I love my Catherine. And I'm going to talk about the parts that I love about her dress. But just on first glance, I'm picking Megan's. I am. This is the one and only time you'll hear me say that on a fashion thing, especially with Megan. But I do. I love this dress. This is actually one of mine. Sorry, one of hers that I actually truly, I really like this dress. I think it's really pretty. Maybe it's that she finally looks great in a dress and the cut suits her. I'm not sure, but I am very drawn to this dress. I think it's like, again, it's covering the right places, but it's still kind of sexy the way it's cut. I hope we can still be friends. So this dress, of course, is designed by Stella McCartney. So Sarah Burton for Alexander McQueen designed both her wedding dress and her reception dress here. So I really, really want to know your thoughts on this. She looks gorgeous. I do love the belt detail. I do. 
and the cut is so flattering. I got to admit, I don't love the sweater. I love you, Catherine, but I don't, I don't, I don't love that fuzzy sweater. I know the look she was going for. It's very romantic. I just, don't, I don't love it personally, but I am dying to know your thoughts. Please don't turn on me. Okay, I can restore order. Are you ready? Look at this. This is William and Catherine on the way to their reception. Look how fun. I love it. I love this car. I love that it's decked out like this. And look at the cheering crowd in the background. Perfection, right? I love this photograph. It just looks, I, I can feel the excitement. Now take a look at this. While I do love the car, I, what's happening here? It's <laughs> I guess they're just too fancy to decorate their car. They're <laughs> no adoring fans. Let's keep the public away. They are royalty after all. You know, <laughs> like I'm thinking of Megan's Wimbledon freak out where she needed all those empty chairs. Like same thing going on here. All right. Take a look at these. <laughs> so the one on the left, I promise I didn't do this on purpose. It's not that small. It just looks small <laughs> compared to the one on the right. So the one on the left is... Um, Harry and Meghan's cake, and then the one on the right, it, uh, that's William and Catherine's cake. What are our thoughts? They're both beautiful. I mean, how do you knock it? I just don't know how you compare because, <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't know, a beautiful home on the left and a castle on the right. I don't, I don't know how you compare. I'd love to know the flavors of those. I, I actually don't know that, but... I'm just going to call it a draw. They're both stunning. I see the benefit of both. Um, I mean, impressive wise, you have to give it to the right. But I do love the flower detail on the, the one on the left. So I, I don't know. Fun side fact I found when researching the cakes. This was a groom's cake. This was William's cake. He picked this because he loves a chocolate biscuit cake. And personally, that sounds like heaven. Screw those other two cakes. I want to dive my face into this thing. <laughs> that looks gorgeous. I tried to Google. I kept looking for a groom's cake for Harry. I couldn't find anything. I bet Megan didn't allow him to have one. So I have to end on this picture because it's probably one of my all-time favorite pictures of these two. They look so happy and so in love. And, and I'm excited for them all over. I remember watching the wedding on TV and being so thrilled. And here we are again. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm dying to know your thoughts on all of this. Tell me your pick of rings, of flowers, of just all of it. The, the uh, main dress, the second dress, I really want to know. I <laughs> I hope I didn't lose you here. I try to be sillier and, and more fun in my videos, but this one, I don't know. I kind of got into taking a look at all the choices that were made on, you know, their wedding day. We're going to be taking a look at something interesting. That's right. You guys have the best suggestions in the comments. I appreciate them so much. And one of you lovely people suggested that I compare Catherine and Megan's fashions at the same event. So we can take a look at how they differ. <laughs> oh my God. Check out the glare here, right? I feel like Megan's actually glaring at me at this one, but um, yeah, it's kind of unbelievable to see. Huge thank you to you who recommended it. I really appreciate it. I tried to go back and find your comment. I cannot find it for the life of me, but you know who you are. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Let's dive into this. It'll blow your mind. Same disclaimer I always give. I'm not interested in discussing body size you know, comparing that sort of thing. We are looking at tailoring, hats, accessories, things like that. The fit of the clothes, the style of the clothes, that's what we're going for. Here we go. Let's kick off with Wimbledon, shall we? This was 2018. So we have Catherine and Megan here. Catherine is wearing a bespoke Jenny Packham dress. We know Catherine loves Jenny Packham stuff, and I love Jenny Packham stuff on Catherine. We'll get into that. But um, she's wearing, a, yeah, like I say, Jenny Packham dress. It's a Dolce & Gabbana purse, which I will show you in a minute because I love the purse. Megan opted for a Ralph Lauren wide-legged pant in a, I believe it's also Ralph Lauren striped shirt. All right, first glance, what are your thoughts? I love Catherine's dress. There's a really cool detail, which I'm going to show you. I cannot stand Megan's pants, and we'll get into the details on why there. But just at first glance... Catherine's dress, very sporty, but still, I, I just love it. I, I do. I think it's very flattering on her. Um, Megan, I can get over the striped shirt. I've never been to Wimbledon, so I'm not real sure about the actual dress code there, but I can get over the striped shirt. It's sporty. I, I understand. 
I hate these pants with a passion. I mean, I truly hate these pants, and you'll see why. Let me show you what we're dealing with here. All right, take a look at these pants. Let's scroll on down and see what we got. You ready? See? Huge, nonsensical pants. Can't even see that she's wearing shoes. I just don't think that's an attractive look. It does, it, it just, I have to say it again, messy. She looks messy. <laughs> and I'll actually give her some whatever, slack, grace, whatever, and say, okay, it's a sporting event, but no need to look messy. Now, let me use this picture of the crazy pants, but also show you what I love about Catherine's dress. Well, first of all, let me show you the purse. This is Dolce & Gabbana. I just love this purse. It's one that Catherine carries. You'll actually see her reuse it quite a bit and I just think it's a really it's a pretty purse it just has always caught my attention um this dress is so cute I love this dress again it's Jenny Packham but do you see the thoughtful detail you think oh you know it's a polka dot dress what are we talking about no it's actually made to look like tennis balls all right let's talk hairstyle are you ready to be shocked ready Megan's is messy. <laughs> if you didn't watch, uh, what yesterday's video, then you're like, what the heck are you talking about? No, I was just saying how messy, little uh, messy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I promise I didn't do that on purpose. How Megan loves a messy bun. <laughs> I would still say this is neater than some of her others. And, and I will say it's a sporting event. So maybe it makes more sense here. I'm not sure. Versus a lot of those royal duties that we saw her on where she likes a messy bun, <laughs> but still Catherine has the curls, the polished look, absolutely elegant. All right, let's take a look at the following year. This is 2019. And I was going to move on from Wimbledon, but I have to show you this because this is one of my favorite of Catherine's dresses. I just, I love this green so much. I truly do. And I love the bow detail. I love all of it, the button detail, all of it. Um, and I hate this outfit on Megan so much. I actually, this was one of the ones that was mentioned to me repeatedly in the comments when I was talking about what are your least favorite looks on Megan. So we'll, we'll take a look at what's happening here because it's dreadful, but I do, I love that green dress so much on Catherine. Gorgeous. I think that color really suits her. Again, I love the bow detail. I love the buttons. Let's see here. Catherine's is a mid-length Dolce & Gabbana. It's a rewear that she she had originally worn this dress on a tour of British Columbia in 2016. Meghan Markle is wearing a it's called Boss Ves I've never heard of this person Vesplissa V S P L I S A printed midi skirt and a Givenchy because she's obsessed with that apparently long sleeve shirt. Do you know how much? I got that fact from Cosmopolitan, by the way. Do you know how much they're estimating that this shirt costs? $1,395 for a white shirt. All right, let's take a look at this skirt. There, you can see it in its full, I won't say glory, full hideousness. What is this? What am I looking at? I just don't think, and I'm not even... I mean, I hate it. I'm not even trying to just shit on Megan. I'm saying that would not look good on anybody, I don't think. But I especially hate it. I don't know what you could pair it with to make it look better. But with that white shirt, it looks crazy. It does. The, I don't understand the whites together because they're not, you're not even going for the same shade. I don't understand. It looks like she's built it up under her boobs again. She loves that look. I don't understand. There it is. I, I don't understand the skirt. I, I, really, I really, really don't. I really hate it. It looks like a claw wrapping around the side of it. It's, it's horrendous. But here's the name of the skirt. If you wanted to pick one up for yourself, it's actually more reasonably priced than a lot of the other crap she wears. Uh, it's at Harvey Nichols. And then here's that shirt. See, it's now marked down, but at the time they estimated about $1,395 for a white shirt. How do you lose the value of money so much that you can spend that for a white shirt? I don't know. I did want to show a close-up of the Dolce & Gabbana on Catherine. Gorgeous. I just love it. I love the silhouette on her. I, the color's gorgeous. Look at the detail. Look at the polished. Just everything. She just looks gorgeous. I mean, I, again, I want to pet her hair. Not in a weird way. I say that all the time. I love her. <laughs> she looks gorgeous. And, and it, there's that Dolce & Gabbana purse again. Gorgeous. All right. So now I thought I would show you my favorite look of Catherine at Wimbledon. Um, at each event, I'm going to show you my favorite look of Catherine that I've seen, you know, 
I, I just picked my favorite throughout the year. So here is Catherine in 2019. Now this one is, it's a, I wrote it down, but I'm never going to be able to say it right. It's like a Emila Wickstead Jordan dress. And it's, oh, it may be Amelia. I don't know. Uh, it's in pastel blue and I love it. I love the sleeve detail. I just think she looks so incredibly beautiful and radiant in this dress. Look gorgeous. And again, wearing those same earrings that she likes to wear those, I don't know, pearl drops. I don't know. Um, but I love that she wear, repurposes things and I, I just love this dress. I think that color really suits her as well. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at their first balcony appearances after being married. So this was Catherine's. This was June of 2011, Trooping the Color. She is in a white Alexander McQueen coat dress. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I actually really like this coat dress. I do. It's, I think it's really pretty and flattering. This is 2011 again. So the hat's not my favorite, but I can excuse that. I just love that. I do. I love the, the look. I love the dress. I just think, I mean, she looks truly happy there. I think it's a good look on her. And here she is with Camilla and back when Harry used to occasionally smile <laughs> and not be miserable all the time. All right, here's Megan's first appearance on the balcony after marrying Harry. This was uh, Trooping the Color, and she's wearing an off-the-shoulder Carolina Herrera dress. So I learned something interesting. Well, first of all, let's talk style. I don't mind the color. All I can think of, though, when I see this is we want privacy and also this picture because this picture always makes me laugh. Tell me you've seen this picture. It's that weirdo stare at Harry. It's so bizarre, but whatever. Okay. Um, she, he can't even have a word with his dad without her gazing at him. Like, <laughs> seriously with this, she's going to hit him with her Frisbee hat. But <laughs> um, so here they are trooping the color. So this is interesting. I did, when I was researching this, I found out something I didn't know. So maybe it'll be something you don't know, but you guys know everything. So maybe you already knew it. Okay. So this look was actually considered controversial by the press. When I was doing research, they brought up this right here and they showed how far off the shoulder and said that's not exactly within dress code, if you will. You know what I mean? They said it's actually kind of controversial and the, the news reported on it. Well, get this, guys. Do you know what? Again, I had no idea about this, but do you know what the news is speculating she did? This, this is what she did. People put together that she wore this dramatic shoulder and they speculate it's because she was mad at the criticism of her off the shoulder look that we just looked at. So I, I just always thought the shoulders were kind of nuts on this thing, but whatever, it's fine. But I didn't even put together that it's a, an F you to the media for reporting that, you know, that the last one wasn't quite right for the event. And now I want to show you my favorite Trooping the Color of Catherine right here. Look at this. This is 2016. She wore an Alexander McQueen coat dress. Gorgeous. Look at that. So beautiful. Little baby Charlotte. So sweet. And again, another reason to love Catherine. So she actually rewore this dress. This is what she wore to Charlotte's christening. She repurposed for Trooping the Color. So here she is in it. I love it. I love this look. I think it pairs beautifully with the hat. And look at how she matches with baby Charlotte. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And here she is wearing it um, for Charlotte's christening. So I just, I want you to be able to see it. It's beautiful. I love the neckline. I love the cut of it, the fit. She's, I mean, she's flawless. Um, I prefer the hat she wore for Trooping the Color. But again, for a christening, I totally get it. Gorgeous. All right, let's move over to Royal Ascot. This is said to be the Queen's favorite racing event. So here we have Meghan Markle wearing a white Givenchy shirt dress. I don't know what it is with Givenchy. <laughs> what is with that? Why is she so obsessed with it? I, I mean, I would, I can't afford any of that stuff anyway, but I'm saying like, even if I could, I think I'd avoid Givenchy. <laughs> um, but uh, here she is. And, and I gotta say, it, I talked about before, this is my least favorite hat. And I just think this dress is a wrinkled mess. Again, I got to cite my video yesterday and say, messy, messy. I just see this and I think, messy. Why do you like to belt under your boobs? <laughs> messy. <laughs> Maybe that's what these two are fighting about here. He told her she looked messy. <laughs> oh, God. 
All right, so I actually didn't have one for Catherine this same year because she had just had baby Louie. She was out on maternity leave. So this is the following year. Better, I love it so much. It's Ellie Saab. It's just gorgeous. So perfectly fits her, tailored, elegant. Hair is done up beautifully. I mean, look at them together. It's perfection. What can I say? It's one of my favorite looks on her. All right, you guys, this is pretty funny. Not this dress, but what happened here. Now, I wanted to find a fancier event. So I started looking and I was looking up trying to find like, I don't know, a dress up event. So here's one where Catherine presented an award at the National History Museum. So this was 2019 and um, she's wearing this dress. I just love this dress. If you can see the detail, it's kind of hard, I know. But it's a Barbara C-A-S-A-S-O-L-A. Casola? I'm not sure. But she's a Brazilian designer. And I just think Catherine looks so beautiful here with the detail of this dress. It It's just I think the cut's really flattering. She looks gorgeous. I love her hair here. She's even wearing Jimmy Choo sparkle shoes, which I'll show you. Just absolutely gorgeous. So she's actually worn this dress twice. She wore it in 2016. Um, I believe that was the gala. And then in 2019 to present the award at the National History Museum, like I say. So here's the detail of the dress. If you can see the stripes go... Um, the, they're in different directions, but it's just, it's very, again, tailored perfectly for her. It's very flattering, gorgeous cut. And there's the Jimmy Choo shoes. So just, I mean, just, I love it. I, I can't say enough good stuff about it. I could never wear this dress, but I think she looks just gorgeous in it. And when I was pulling pictures from it, they had this picture on the right of her thanking the people that made the meals for the event. So, I mean... You cannot get classier than that. I think it's just, it's incredible. Then you guys, I Googled Meghan Markle. I promise I didn't do this on purpose. I Googled Meghan Markle Museum and Meghan Markle Gala. And I swear to God, this is what came up. And I'm showing you even the bottom. It says the words museum. Oh, it cuts off gala. But it, I promise it said that on there. And this is what Meghan wore. I've talked about this dress every day because I hate it that much. It is truly one of the most hideous things I've ever seen. It does absolutely nothing. It does not flatter. It's horrendously made. It's it's awful. It's <laughs> Carolina Herrera. I don't understand it. I think it should be burnt. I it's I mean, we talked about it in detail, so I'm not even going to go back in. I hadn't even seen this picture. When I was searching the, the museum thing, this picture popped up, and I thought, oh, my God, it got worse. The pictures got worse. I'm actually mad because the pictures are so bad. And then I found this dishonorable mention. How have I not seen this piece of crap before? I wanted to make sure... I, I've seen this stupid red dress so much, but I was confusing designer. So I Googled Meghan Markle, Carolina Herrera, and sure enough, that's who was over the red dress, but also apparently designed this. I don't even remember seeing this, but again, I'm mad because it's shapeless and hideous. Looks like she got stuck in a sleeping bag and just decided to wear that to a photo shoot. Oh, you guys, I appreciate you all so very much. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. This was really fun. I welcome ideas. Definitely leave me comments if there's something you want to see. I have a list full of them, so I will keep working on them and let me know what else you want to see. Hey, if you're new here, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. If you've been with me a long time, thanks for being here as well. You guys are the best. I really appreciate you, and I can't wait to bring you more videos like this. Take care. Have the best day. Bye-bye.